Sternoklavikler join dislocation. Review. The proximal clavicle physis is the last one to close between the age of 23 to 25. There are few important points in this area. The most important one is a CT scan is the study of choice. An X-ray called serendipity view with 40 degree cephalic tilt and you compare both clavicles is really not used frequently. What are the conditions there? Number one, atraumatic ligamentous laxity will give subluxation and you will treat that conservatively. No surgery. Another one is anterior dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint. The anterior dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint is common. You will have an anterior pump. You will accept the deformity. It's usually unstable with reduction, but usually asymptomatic. The patient with anterior dislocation usually do very well, but some patients will progress to chronic instability, which could be associated with pain and decreased activity. Treatment of anterior dislocation will be non-operative treatment, such as immobilization. You will treat it by sling or close the reduction, which is often not successful. You can achieve that by direct pressure over the medial end of the clavicle. Then you use figure 8 sling and you immobilize the shoulder for 6 weeks. When you do sternoclavicular reconstruction and medial clavicle resection, most of the time the primaris longus tendon graft is used. Try to use it in figure 8 technique because it has a higher mechanical strength in anterior and posterior direction. Another one is the posterior dislocation. The posterior type is not common. And this one is dangerous. Why it is dangerous? Because it can compress the trachea, the esophagus, and the great vessels. It can give dyspnea, strider, dysphagia, tachypnea, In a young patient, rule out physial fracture, not a dislocation. Fracture through the medial physis, the clavicle shaft sublux or dislocate anteriorly or posteriorly, leaving the epiphysis attached to the sternum. So what is the posterior dislocation treatment? You will reduce under general anesthesia, with abduction and extension. You will have a thoracic surgery backup. You may use towel clip for the medial clavicle. Reduction is usually stable. What if you try to reduce it and it becomes unstable? You will do soft tissue surgical stabilization. Some prefer to do a section of the medial clavicle but don't resect more than a centimeter and a half to avoid injury to the costoclavicular ligament. What if the posterior dislocation is late? Then avoid close reduction because of the adhesions in the retrosternal area. What if the patient is young? Well, this is not a dislocation. It is probably a medial clavicle physial fracture especially if the patient is less than 25 years old. The injury is usually SOLTOR 1 or SOLTOR 2. If the clavicle is going posteriorly, then you should reduce it. But if you can reduce it closed, then what are you going to do? If the patient is asymptomatic, then leave it alone and observe the patient even if it is posteriorly displaced physial fracture. But if the patient is symptomatic, you will do open reduction with thoracic surgery backup. So the bottom line is the anterior dislocation, leave it alone. The subluxation is ligamentous, laxity, 
Leave it alone is not a problem. The posterior is dangerous. Get it out. Have a backup thoracic surgeon. Usually the reduction is stable, but if it turns out the reduction is unstable, then what are you going to do? You will do a soft tissue procedure for surgical stabilization. You will resect the medial clavicle, no more than a centimeter and a half, and avoid injury to the costal clavicular ligament. If it is posterior dislocation and old, leave it alone. There is a lot of adhesions. If it is physial injury in a young guy and posterior displaced, then you need to reduce it. But if you can reduce it close, what are you going to do? You're going to leave it alone if the patient is asymptomatic, or you're going to do open reduction with a backup thoracic surgeon if the patient is symptomatic. So symptomatic, get it out. You need to do it. If it is chronic and asymptomatic, leave it alone. Thank you very much. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.